Okay, so hello folks, and welcome to my new video. In this video, I will be showing you how I go about making a mini base. So a mini base is sort of like, sometimes people call it a forward operating base, sometimes they call it by a different name, but anyways, the basic point is you want it to be somewhat hidden out of the general sight of, you know, the rest of the people playing the game. So I did a lot of looking at this little mini map here while I was doing this. Um, so if you'll uh, notice, I'm at latitude 50-ish, longitude 60-ish. So upper right hand corner of this map. Anyways, um, so I'm trying to position myself so that I'm relatively close to resources like obsidian, oil, and you know, also especially I really want to be closer to the caves, such as the Northwestern Cave, which is home to like tons and tons of crystal, obsidian, and other resources, which will be super useful at the sort of mid to mid late ish game. Okay, so I'm uh, right now I'm just kind of uh, collecting resources. I'm doing what I probably would recommend not doing, which is don't clear cut around where your base is. I'm just doing this for this video. And this is on one of my sort of the other servers that I play on. So I don't play on this server quite as often as I do on my main server, but it's still, you know, it's still a bad idea just because you know, you're kind of setting yourself up for some problems. But anyways, so I'm just going to keep uh, collecting stuff. What I'm generally trying to do when I make a forward operating base is I make a two by three stone base. If you want to, you can use microtransactions. Just click on the backpack and then click on the little gem icon and then go to crafting stations, and you can buy all this stuff from the stone workshop. Don't make wood things, that's just ridiculous. Uh, or you can uh, get from the metal foundry. I generally prefer to do all of this grinding myself, because that way I'm gonna also get experience from doing it. Whereas if you just go the microtransaction route, then you will just get the structures and you won't get any of the experience, which I think is kind of, you know, experience is way more important than just getting really high quality structures. Uh, for your main base, that will be a little bit different. You will definitely want to use metal walls, metal foundations and stuff for your main base. Um, but for the forward operating bases, it's kind of like half of the point of it is just to get the experience. Okay, so I'm going to go back to this here. And so this is my, um, so what I want to do also is I want to check and see if we've got, what do I need to make a bed? I need more thatch. I also want to go to engrams and get pillar. And I want to get stone pillars. Okay, opened crafting. What do I need for that? I need more thatch. So I need a lot more thatch. Remember, you get thatch by using your journeyman pickaxe. So I just get the pickaxe from the uh, the crafting station. So what, what, which crafting station do I get that from? I get it from the outpost. The outpost is pretty much the main uh, crafting station that I use in this game just because it's it makes getting resources way easier and uh, otherwise you'd just be wasting a lot of time trying to grind up with like you know your stone primitive hatchet uh, in order to get those basic sort of resources okay so I'm just going forward here a little bit more uh, collecting some resources Again, like, you know, this is, uh, and I think I will back away from that Alpha T-Rex right there. Hopefully it doesn't see me. So yeah, those things, uh, will be able to kill you in like 
two chomps or so. Also, you have to keep an eye on where various other problem things are. For instance, up a little bit higher on this mountainside where I was planning on building my forward operating base, there were two other things. One was a massive metal base, which was probably just loaded with turrets and all sorts of stuff, and also a titanosaur, which you basically don't want to build anywhere near the titanosaur because that thing... Well, there's two issues. Firstly, it can just trample through your base and destroy everything. And secondly, it attracts lots of, like, max-level players who are trying to kill it. So yeah, stay away from the Titanosaur. Unless, of course, you're going towards it intentionally. But yeah, no, don't build forward operating bases right next to the Titanosaur. Because you will be found out either by the thing itself or by other players. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to get a bed, a furnace, mortar and pestle, campfire, one of these uh, large storage boxes, and then where's, the, okay, here it is, some pillars, a large crop plot, and now we want to focus primarily on stone walls. So I'm going to start getting some more, <clears throat> uh, some more stone here. I will be showing you in another video how to go about getting and planting uh, the Plant X seed. So this is uh, one of the sort of main things I use as an alternative to an auto turret because uh, auto turrets are just relatively annoying to get all the resources for and they're also extremely um, targeted by people trying to raid you. So the advantage of the Plant X over the auto turret is that you can't really raid someone and steal their plant X. So plant X is different from the auto turret in that it shoots uh, poison or poisonous stuff at enemies, whereas the auto turret shoots bullets at enemies, which is able to kill the enemy, um, whereas the plant X basically, basically the point of what the plant X is doing is it blinds you and makes you potentially die, but more often than not, um, it blinds you for long enough so that you run closer into a very short range turret range. Okay, so again, you don't need to stop too quickly once uh, you start running low on stamina, but do stop eventually. Okay, so I'm gonna just make some more um, I'm going to check how my, so I also want to make sure occasionally to, uh, occasionally I want to repair my clothes so that that way if I do get attacked that I will have more defenses than I would under normal circumstances. Okay, so... That's also another tip uh, about this uh, game as well, is, y you know, you're presented with a variety of different uh, skin tones uh, when you s sign up at the start. And, what, and the reason I like the darker skin tones like you see right here is that compared with the rest of the background, you blend in a little bit better. So, I mean, I, I know that you know, especially in the online gaming community, there's, you know, a lot of uh, people joking about, you know, this sensitive issue. But, you, you know, for ARC, I highly recommend uh, going with a darker skin tone. Just because you don't stand out as much as you do if you 
have a super light skin tone against, you know, a super dark background. I don't know, that's just one of my ways of trying to um, slip by undetected in, uh, you know, the arc world. Okay, so I'm going to go over here. Um, I don't need to put these uh, pillars down because, you, you know, it's not terribly far out from uh, the rest uh, or from the rest of the pillar or from the rest of the stone foundations. The reason I'm putting those down is if people come over here with like C4 or other types of explosives, it makes it so that my structure is much more likely to remain standing. Okay, so I'm going to put this down here, this here, and this here. Okay, so now I've got something that's relatively defensible, at least in the very short run. I'm going to put my bed as far over this as I can can. An advantage also of putting the bed in the corner is it blocks out the light a little bit that a uh, that a refining forge will make. Then I'm going to put this right over here. There we are. And then I'm going to put the refining forge down right here. There we are. And then I'm going to put down this uh, mortar and pestle right here. Again, notice I'm doing the same thing. I'm trying to keep the campfire a little bit bumped out into the main area so that the light from the campfire uh, is not quite as visible. There we are. So now I'm going to put wood in the refining forge. Just put all your stacks of wood in there. And then a large storage box. I'm just going to put all the meat in there. All the hide in there. All of this. This will be super useful later on um, when you're going to be making... Um, cementing paste. Go back over here, select this. I'm going to move all of this into there along with as much stone as I can and start making spark powder. You're going to then want to go over to the refining forge and put in all the metal that you have. That will lighten up your load significantly. Um, and then just go back out here and start collecting again. So you may be wondering why I'm going with uh, getting the fire burning before I even have walls and a roof up. And the reason for that is if someone's going to try to raid me, they will raid me whether I have ro a roof and walls up. And generally, if they do raid me, like, you know, at this point... It's better to know sooner that there's people that are going to be trying to raid you nearby than it is to get everything up and looking really nice and then turn on a fire and get raided and wiped. So I do this generally as a sort of uh, cautionary, like, is anyone nearby that's going to raid me? Okay, so this is pretty much wrapping up this video here. Um, this is sort of the sort of general introductory uh, how to set up your forward operating base. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do like it. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's That will help me out a ton. I'm really trying to grow my community of people who watch my videos. Uh, this I mean, every subscriber that I get means a ton to me. So thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all back in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.